Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Matt Chat, episode 417, uh, featuring a, a game that I feel has gone undeservingly underappreciated. <laughs> Namely, uh, The Dark Heart of Ukru. Now, this is a game that, uh, you know, I heard about this game off and on when I was writing uh, Dungeons and Desktops. It doesn't seem to get the recognition that some people think it deserves, <laughs> especially... Uh, uh, Casey and uh, Augustine, who recommended this a while back on Facebook, I'd asked people to tell me the, uh, a game that they really love that they wish more people had heard about. And most of the games I've already covered, but this was one that, uh, you know, I haven't. I've been meaning to, though, so I thought it was great. And I'll try to get to those other games uh, <laughs> in upcoming episodes. Uh, but anyway, what is The Dark Heart of Ukrul? Uh, this is a game by Digital Studios Limited. Uh, basically, two guys, Ian Boswell and Martin Buis or Bowie, uh, they published it in 1989 for Apple II as well as DOS. And um, you can't get it on GOG, it's not on Steam, it is on, on GOG. A lot of people wish for it, it's on the wish, GOG wish list, so who knows. <laughs> Maybe this video will finally give it uh, enough attention to get that done, because uh, I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, if you do want to play it now, uh, you can pick it up on uh, the various <laughs> abandoned wear sites. Not really going to get into that. Uh, although I will say it's relatively easy to get set up in, in DOSBox, nothing uh, special. Uh, there's no audio, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but anyway, it's a lot to it. It's kind of a cross between, uh, to me it feels a lot like Dungeon Master, uh, except it's got grid-based uh, movement. It's got the turn-based style combat, though, of uh, the Gold Box series. Maybe some of, I think it's uh, one of the Ultima, Ultima 3, maybe, with the turn-based combat. Uh, but there's a lot of emphasis here on puzzles. Uh, probably more so than uh, the hack and slash combat. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is the Dark Heart of Ukrul. All and here we go, folks, with the Dark Heart of Ukrul. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> uh, this is a game by uh, Ian Boswell. And Martin Buis came out in either 1989 or 1990. You can see they list the year there as 1990. And uh, this was it's one of those underappreciated gems, at least according to some of, the, some of your, your fellow match hatters wanted me to look at this game, specifically uh, Casey Heisman and Augustin Cordes of uh, Scratches fame. Uh, now, I've played it a little bit before, you know, booted it up just to play it for my Dungeons and Desktops book, basically. Uh, but I haven't really delved into it yet, uh, so hopefully this video will correct <laughs> that terrible error. Uh, now you might be wondering, Matt, why you got this? Why you got the game muted? Well, where's the game audio? <laughs> where's the lovely music? <laughs> and uh, don't be an idiot like yours truly and spend the better part of an hour in DOSBox audio settings trying to figure out where I went wrong. <laughs> because there's no game audio in this at all. Uh, so if you really like music, you probably want to play a little something in the background of uh, uh, from your MP3 selection, maybe some good SID tunes, <laughs> some, some mods or something, because there is no sound. Uh, and something else interesting uh, while I'm thinking about it, Ian and Martin, apparently this is their only game, uh, at least according to uh, Moby Games. I wasn't able to find out anything else about these guys. Uh, in the manual, they have a nice page about who the authors are. They talk a little bit about their philosophy behind the game. I might get into, the, into that. Uh, but, but then again, it's kind of a fun thing if you do track down this game. Look at the manual. It's, a, it's really nice, about 70, I think about 80 pages worth. Uh, so anyway, let's get into it. Uh, now, the, uh, this version, I, I believe this came from either Abandonia, Abandonia or House of Games, uh, one of those, because you can't get this on GOG. It is one of the most highly requested games on GOG. Hoping uh, maybe this video will put it over the edge and <laughs> I get these uh, folks. I think it's a uh, Broderbund did this. Uh, you know, who knows who has the copyrights anymore. Kind of doubt it's up to Boswell and Buis or Bowie, uh, but we don't know. Uh, but anyway, I say all this because the save game, uh, the party was dead. So I had to make my own party, uh, which is fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, this utility lets you generate a novice party of four characters to explore the mountain citadel of... Uh, Eros the uh, Brave Fighter. So I don't know how much they're going to get into this in the game. If you read the manual, again, there's several pages uh, worth of background, like what, what the hell's going on here, what's the story. Uh, there's also some journal. 
this is not the journal like in Pool of Radiance where you have to read it to figure out a secret code or something. It's just a little background of some previous adventures. Uh, to me, this kind of feels a little bit like a cross between uh, the old Dungeon Master game, which came out, you know, maybe uh, three or four years before this. Uh, so it's kind of got that vibe uh, a little bit. But, of course, the, the look of these characters makes it feel more like a uh, like an Ultima game. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into it and see what we uh, think. But the, basically the story is uh, we're going, we're some novice adventurers. We've been trained by this council. Uh, we're, we're going to go in uh, to this uh, mountainside and try to defeat this um, evil power that's been building up all this time. Uh, so that's basically it. And then we'll have these different character classes, and we have to pick one of each instead of, uh, you know, you can't really mix and match these because I guess there's uh, story elements to go along with each class. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and develop our first character, who will be the fighter. First, choose the name uh, and sex of this character. Well, the, the name's always the tricky part. The, the sex is always easy. That's just simply yes. Uh, but let's look at the... the I was going to reward some of my uh, patrons here, some of my ratrons. And so we'll go with them, uh, some of the newer folks, some of the older folks. We'll just kind of mix and match this here. Uh, let's put in uh, James as our fighter. Still James. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> you notice it's not Y-N, it's just F-M. Uh, so we'll make him male. I think he would probably be okay with that, though you never know these days. Yes, we will confirm this. James, male fighter. Now to shape James's personality. Picture yourself as James. Oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, James, uh, I'm going to be making some pretty wild guesses because I don't really know you all that well. Uh, anyway, well, let's imagine, I'll just imagine I'm him. He's got kind of a Charlie Brown icon, so maybe he likes to uh, channel his inner Charles Schultz. See, in a dream, you find yourself in a small room. You see what I mean about the Ultima, uh, the Ultima influence here? Uh, in a dream, you find yourself in a small room with a door in each wall. Uh, set in each door is a mirror, but the reflections are dissimilar. Which door would you walk through? <laughs> okay, I kind of lost the flow here. <laughs> I'm in a small room with the door in each wall. Each door is a, set in each door is a mirror, but the reflections are dissimilar. Okay, I think <laughs> they put down the acid. <laughs> See, door one reflects a rough, muscular warrior holding a blood-stained axe who leers at you threateningly. Door two, bold fighter with a shining sword and armor. Uh, door three, a lean, agile fighter with light armor and a cunning look in his eye. It is Baldric. Uh, door four, strong, well-armed warrior of heavy build. So I think I see what they're getting at here. And obviously, the answer is door number one. Always go with the axe. Yes, you push the door open, revealing a dark passage. After walking for a while, you confront a nasty troll clutching a tempting sack. You are more interested in the sack than the troll. Well, yeah. <laughs> like to think so. Uh, what would you be most likely to do? Try to kill the troll to get the sack. Try to knock the troll out with a blunt weapon. Use your cunning to put the troll off guard, then snatch the sack. Well, I'm going to go with the snatch. Boom. Had to make my own sound effects, right? Uh, you managed to get the sack and open it. It contains not treasure, but a strange orange fungus. Uh, what, um. <coughs> okay. <laughs> what would you do? Uh, leave the sack where it is and forget it. Take the sack with you uh, for identification without touching the contents. Experiment yourself to try and determine the nature of the fungus. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what to do with this one, but I guess I would experiment with it. <laughs> I mean, we're already seeing weird hallucinations in mirrors and doors. I mean, how can that can it get worse? <laughs> Uh, in your dream, oh, okay, I guess it knocked us out. Uh, you find a long deserted shrine to an unknown deity. Uh, twi uh, Twinkie guy. Drawings above the altar depict lightning bolts. Maybe it's the horned rat. Uh, drawings above the altar depict lightning bolts, savage beasts, and bloody battles. Large ruby 
is embedded at the base of the altar. You had me at Ruby. <laughs> yes, of course. I will dare to prize it out and take it. That's all the questions for James. This is how he will start. Drum roll, please. He's healthy. <laughs> uh, 13 strength. I don't know. These go to 18. Uh, 6 intelligence. 5 piety. 11 dex. 7 vitality. So I guess he's not that great. <laughs> he's wearing Buskin's cap and a breastplate, small shield, short iron sword. What happened to my axe? Okay, anyway, let's go on to the paladin. <laughs> oh, pally, pally, pally. Who will I pick for him? Let's go with Mr. Simon. Yes, Simon. Oh, what the hell? Simon. And Simon is a also a male. Confirm name and sex. Yes. Now picture Simon in your mind. Okay. Uh, which of these would best describe your attitude to combat? Okay, let's see. Simon, Simon, Simon. Uh, there's nothing like the smell of the smell of battle. It's the ultimate thrill. You know, I don't imagine a, a battle smells that good. <laughs> You're kind of imagining like a lot of intestines and stuff. Uh, probably not the aroma uh, that you would appreciate. Uh, there's honor and victory over adversaries. Great battles and conquests are the stuff legends are made of. Uh, fighting is an exhilarating tactical challenge. It requires the mind as well as the body. Or killing enemies is only a means to an end. Nobody dies who doesn't need to be killed. Well, these are uh, pretty good. I think I like the third one better, since I like <laughs> turn-based combat so much. Uh, some mist descends and you pass out. As you begin to regain consciousness, you see the walls moving closer. We're in Star Wars here. <laughs> uh, what would your immediate reaction be? Clear your head, brace the walls, and push them apart. Well, there's the uh, is that Han Solo's and Luke Skywalker solution. Uh, search for an exit or call out for help. And I think we're going to follow <laughs> the Star Wars model. Uh, in your travels, you are confronted by an evil-looking thug who orders you to leave town. Thick, set, and hairy. She, well, okay, she looks bigger and stronger than you are, but not exactly a tower of intellect. What do you do? Challenge her authority, challenge her to a duel, challenge her parentage, or challenge her to a game of chess. <laughs> A thick set and hairy she thug. Um, I don't know. Let's challenge her to a game of chess. <laughs> uh, you defeated a mighty dragon, and it's time to plunder the lair. The problem is there's too much treasure to carry. Oh, God. How well I know this problem. Uh, what do you do? Guard the lair until help arrives. Uh, take what you can now. Return later, telling nobody. Leave the treasure to go and get help. Well, obviously, the third one is out. So, probably going to go with two. Yeah. That's all the questions for Simon. Let's see if we did any better this time. Mel Paladin Guardian. 11 strength, 11 int, 5 piety, 13 dex. <laughs> this guy's got a lot of dexterity uh, for a pally. He's got leather gloves, boots, quaff. Breastplate, small shield, and a hand. Oh, this guy gets the axe. Okay. Okay. I don't know if these are characters are just god awful or what. All right. Let's go with Spence for the third one. Spence the priest. He's got the, uh, what do you call that cat? The grumpy cat. <laughs> That's his logo. <laughs> I assume it's got to be a him, right? Uh, Spence in your mind. Answer these questions. Imagine Spence is probably short for Spencerman or <laughs> Spenceologist. <laughs> See, a vision appears before you. A demigod in the form of a strange beast with intense white light shining from its eye sockets. That doesn't sound good. It demands of you. What is the most essential aspect of your calling? Uh, what do you reply? Reception. It's not an option. Well, let's see. Uh, the ability to call upon holy powers to defeat your foes. Your implicit loyalty and service to your colleagues. Unswerving devotion to the causes of your deities. Or the 
Ability to prophesy, inscribe visions of the future. You know, I'm thinking probably the second one, right? I mean, a priest, they're there to, to help out their buddies. Uh, you're exploring with two fighters. You disturb a fierce monster, combat ensues. The fighters attack at once. What are you most likely to do initially? Attack also, <laughs> call for divine assistance, retain guard in a defensive position. Attack also. Okay, you find a tablet with some ancient writing and an indecipherable script. Would you rather give the tablet to a prophet or sell the tablet for a prophet? <laughs> See what they did there? Yeah, it's kind of kind of clever. Uh, I'm gonna give the tablet to a prophet. You're forced to choose between your own life and the preservation of your deity shrine from defilement by a horde of marauding orcs. What do you do? Protect your skin, face eternal damnation? <laughs> no. Uh, protect the shrine, meet the afterlife rather than sooner than you had hoped. Rather sooner than you had hoped. <laughs> Flip a coin, <laughs> come an agnostic. <laughs> uh, hmm. I think become an agnostic. <laughs> uh, that's all the questions for Spence. Uh, this is how he will start. Okay, so he's got a good piety score. Now these rings, I still don't quite get the business with the rings. Uh, the manual has a bunch of pages. Maybe we'll get into that, uh, figure it out along the way. Uh, but apparently you have to have a ring to cast the spells in, in these different... Uh, groups groupings i forget the i think they're called arcana or circles of arcana something like this and then they uh, come in different strengths different metals so the fe being iron i think that's uh, a periodic uh the periodic name chart name for iron fe pretty sure that and then i think it goes to copper and on up to platinum and crystal and uh, some other ones so i'm not I don't, I don't quite understand it yet again we'll get more into it as we go along. I think you have to find rings, get upgraded rings, or get better rings as you go. Okay, now we got the Magician, and it looks like this is going to fall to our old buddy. Could it be? Yes, our old buddy, Seth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Seth actually watches the, the show regularly. Uh, Mel, confirm the name. Yes, the Mel Magician. Now picture Seth in your mind, <laughs> uh, the legend of the red dragon. Uh, answer these questions as you imagine he would. Remember to choose carefully because uh, <laughs> Seth will be pissed <laughs> if I don't answer like he would. Is that, uh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea picking actual people for these. Uh. Anyway, at the time of your apprenticeship, uh, your tutor shows you four curious objects with mysterious powers. Uh, without explaining their functions, he says you may select just one. Which do you choose? Amulet of brass with eight different colored stones. Ancient book with a gilt cover, but in which every page appears to be blank. Appears to be blank. A scalloped dagger with a glowing blood red haft. <laughs> I think it's probably what he would pick. <laughs> a small plain looking wand with a glyph shaped like an eye carved into it. I think he would probably like this dagger. No, Matt! <laughs> I would never choose that dagger! Uh, during a difficult combat, your psychic powers become dangerously low. Psychic powers. Okay, so mages are psychic. A fighter sustains a severe wound is left near death. You can only manage one more spell, which will either heal the fighter or finish off the monster. Which do you choose? Heal the fighter and hope someone else can slay the monster quickly, or kill the monster and hope the fighter can survive. We're going to kill the monster. Exploring an unknown area, you come to a sheer rock face with a ledge 20 feet up. An old rope hangs down, not very thick, and has started to rot. You're the lightest member of the party. Would you be willing to climb up? <laughs> no problem. Not a chance. Only with great reluctance. Yeah. Climb that rope. Good exercise. Good for the legs. Now you're preparing a potion for treating what? Borborigmi, Borborigmi, Borbor, whatever that is, sounds bad. It needs that something extra. Which ingredient would you add? Eye of worm. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, do, do worms 
have eyes? Uh, hair of a newt. I'm come to think of it, the newts have hair. Uh, toe of snake. You know, I think I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> or tail of frog. <laughs> uh, how about the toe of snake? Uh, that's all the questions for Seth. This is how he will start off. Drum roll, please. Strength 7, 13 intelligence, 7 pies, 6 decks, 10 vitality. He's got 3 rigs. Fire, healing, and knowledge. 9 psychic points. <laughs> the party is ready. Okay. If you wish to play with multiple parties, you can give this party a specific name. Up to 7 characters. The standard name for a party is game. Use this if you will only be playing with one party. I guess I'll only be playing it with one party, but we'll just call it something else. How about Met Met Shaw? <laughs> Can't get fit in the extra character. Ah! Boom. Okay, let's get into the game then. All right, then let's continue on. I lowered the gain a little bit on my mic, so I noticed it was getting a little bit distorted. Play the game. All right, boom, here we are, James, Simon, Spence, and Seth. I just noticed there's a, we got the three S's covered here. Everybody's healthy? <laughs> Pretty good sign. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this interface. You got some kind of runes going along the sides. And I think I read in the manual that we will be needing to uh, decipher some runes, I think maybe to save the game oh, when we get to that point. Let's see, how do we... Okay, yeah, so it looks very... Dungeon Mastery. We can cast, we can invoke. Must be the, I guess I'm guessing that's the priest thing. Use search walls. Try that out. Search. <laughs> search. Must be a lot of secret uh, walls like in Dungeon Master. Let's see. Map. Reading the map. Use arrow keys to move the cursor. Oh, we can label squares. That's always good. Jump to labels. Home and quit. Okay, that's a pretty good auto map. It looks like that will come in handy. I always like it when you can add your own stuff to the maps. Uh, we can do a heading check. <laughs> heading check. <laughs> oh, you mean I have to hit that every time I want to see the, the compass? Okay. Uh, and then E for examine party. Money 80 units. <laughs> for uh, Food 448. Oh, I guess we'll be ticking off for food as well. I don't see water there. Maybe it's just food. Maybe we can check out our lovely party. Got the guitar slinger here. <laughs> James, not looking good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's our pally. He kind of looks like he's out of Tron, doesn't he? Uh, monk. And our sorcerer. It's a pretty badass looking sorcerer. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get into this. Uh, <clears throat> the passage from your entrance into Eros... Uh, slopes downward steeply. The walls carry mosaics showing hunting scenes. The walls carry mosaics. I guess I just have to imagine. <laughs> imagine. They didn't uh, spend that many bucks on these mosaics of hunting. As you pass, Seth examines the torches fixed to the walls. He finds they are solidly constructed and cannot be removed from their fixtures. <laughs> oh, how convenient. <laughs> oh, good job, Seth. Yes, yes, I am. Oh, well, oh. the hall continues downward. Though the mosaics on the wall have stopped, the air smells stale and dusty. There is no sound from the passage ahead, or indeed no sound in this game at all. Moving on. Passage flattens out. The musty smell in the air is stronger and seems to come from ahead of you. Okay, I don't <laughs> the suspense is building. Uh, what am I creeping up on? Let's see. Uh, the wall you are facing seems solid, but Seth, man, Seth is like on top of this. And Seth, he can sense an he can sense an open area just behind it. A circular groove has been worn around the edge of the wall, as if to form. The outline of a door. Ah, oh, we have a little choose your own adventure here. So I can push against the wall, trace the groove by hand, trace the groove with the staff, or do nothing. Circular groove. Okay. 
Well, it seems like the staff would be the <laughs> safest option. So we will push against the wall. <laughs> Nothing happens. Okay, trace the groove by hand then. Nothing happens. Well, crying out loud, okay, try the staff. Seth runs his staff around the groove. As he completes the arc, a portal appears. He warns that if you go through, there may well be no such door leading back. And that sounds exactly like something Seth would say. <laughs> uh, what can I do? Listen at the door? Oh, why not? There is total silence. Okay. Uh, well, what else can I do here? Can I just go through it? Boom! I went through the door. You enter a large hall decorated with fine mosaics. Uh, the hall is quiet. It looks as though it hasn't been entered in many years. The air is stale and dry, and there is a patina of dust everywhere. Seth, uh, Seth says that this was originally an assembly area for the ancients. <laughs> they put all their IKEA furniture together. As you look around at the faded colors and decay, you realize that this must be one of the oldest parts of Eroste. You stand there breathless, aware that you have entered the mountain city. Ahead of you lie the myriad passages that span the mountain range and lead to Akrul's palaces. Your task has begun. <laughs> All right, looking good. Yep, doesn't look like there's any way back. Because, <laughs> you know, I might want to go back and look at those hunting mosaics again, but... Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> I'll search the wall. Oh, it's gone, it's gone. All right, inscription. Uh, cast, invoke, use, read inscription. Yes. You of the blood noble are well come are welcome to these halls. Welcome. All right, I guess the spelling wasn't so good, those, these inscriptionists. Not a very helpful inscription. Oh, look at that. We got sort of, a, what, two hammers, two axes, and a little pattern. Uh, listen at the door again. Simon doesn't hear anything. Well, let's just look around a little bit. And, oh, there's another inscription. I bless all of those of the blood noble who enter Rusty, Syriki. There are footprints in the dust here. You notice that the inscription beside you has been added quite recently, and it is Mero's hand. Now, see, Mero is the one who wrote the journal that came with the book, <laughs> or came with the game. <laughs> oh, boy, what is that? Uh, an inscription. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Translate with Ingos. Why not? Whoa! <laughs> Within this pillar, I have protected a key for you. What pillar? Hmm. How do I get to the pillar then? What what pillar? Heading check. Do you see a pillar? <laughs> what where? There. Ah! Discovers the outline of a secret door in the south wall. Open the door. We can force it open, look for a device, speak a word. Hmm. Let's look for a device. Looking. <laughs> Looking. As Simon explores a crack in the wall, he trips a catch and the door opens. All right. And look, there's our key. Beautiful. There's an ornate key on the ground. Pick up the key, obviously. James. James hasn't been very useful so far. <laughs> that looks like a door, doesn't it? Well, okay, let's go back to the map. Uh, you know, I'm not sure which way we really want to, where we want to start. This one's got a, looks like a crown on it. What does that say? <clears throat> Translate again. Syracuse, uh, Syracuse, Syracuse, Syracuse. Laid this stone in the year of the seventh blooming. This the guy's a bit of a gardener. Description West Aristhi Hall of Syracuse. Well, I don't know where to go. F oh, you enter an atrium with path leading north and south. The floor is made from pyramid shaped blocks of crystal, cleverly stacked together to provide a smooth surface. What is. I guess this is a clue. 
Not sure. I guess that's showing me a secret door here, maybe. Whatever that is. This might be where I'm at, maybe. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's look at that map again. Okay, we got some bars there. Locked grate. Can I open it? Try to open it. James tries his key. The ordinary key fits. All right. Good job. Man, there is lots of doors around here. <laughs> you know, let's just go through one of the damn doors. Uh, this room was a dining hall for the ancients. Several huge stone tables still stand, although everything else here has been ruined. Looking around. Don't see any. Oh, here we go. A thick spider web in the corner hides something. Simon cuts through it and reveals several small copper coins. <laughs> Seth takes the money. <laughs> well, thank you, Seth. Okay, I guess that's it for that. Oh, there we go! <laughs> I can really tell this is going to be a splendid, splendid game. They got it right. <laughs> okay, what the hell do I do? <laughs> uh, move, Simon. SP, delay move, normal moves. All right, let's get him down and attack these awesome looking rats. Let's see, Spence, that's our cleric. I guess I can move him down. James, he doesn't really need to move. Let's just hit enter. James, strike opponent, parry, use an item. <laughs> Examine, James. <laughs> I'm looking good. Or no more attacks. Strike the rat. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> boom, da boom, boom. James attacks the rat. Okay. I should have made a, made a little soundboard or something here. Let's see. I probably don't want to cast a spell just on these rats. <laughs> you know what? What the hell? Why not? Is this my... Yeah, this is my uh, mage. So let's see. They don't tell me the... I have to go to the manual to find a spell. And let's see. The first arcana is called Fire. And the first spell is called Amros, the Snake of Fire. A bolt of flame shall grow from your staff and strike one foe. This and all snake spells have speed and range, but they can reach any who would stand against you, but they must follow a straight path. They cannot travel through rock. Though this snake is but iron, it can burn a deep wound. Okay, let's try that one. The <laughs> snake, the snake of fire is Amros. Uh, that doesn't look like a straight line to me. <laughs> <laughs> Better go with the other one. Space to choose the target. There we go. Whoa! <laughs> That's one way to kill a rat. Oh, and then the rat attacked. I still have to figure this out. So I guess the green bar is what? It... The red? I mean, what is what here? The red is health? Or... I'm guessing the green must be health. Who got hit there? I think it was... Was it Simon? Everybody looks good. I don't know. I'll have to look at that again. All right, let's see about a... Oh, he's got lay on hands, too. Okay. I wonder if that's this, the healing. Simon hits at the rat and strikes it, but his hand axe breaks with the blow! Jeez. Okay, he's already lost his... Uh... <laughs> he can call an elemental? I don't know if we want to go that far. Now, I wonder if the priests have any good... Uh... Attack spells. Let's see, invoke. Recite your prayer. You know, it's always good to try this stuff out, right? That's the book of prayers. He's got divine arrow. Uth to. Let's say, we'll just translate that as Ufta. Oh, bow of the stars, hear this low voice. Send down your bolts against the one who stands against you. We have a <laughs> rat. <laughs> Dear God, please smite this rat with your divine arrow. Boom! Worked. Experience. Now that's interesting. So they get different amounts of XP. I wonder how that's doled out. 
18 gold, let's say. Oh, look, there's a key down there. There's a brass key. All right, there's a brass key on the ground. James picks it up. Now, I'm not seeing any, like, save the game. <laughs> oh, there we go. Save the game. Okay, save the game. Yes, save. <laughs> it's saving. I don't know. I guess we only get the one, the one save. Okay, anything there? No, just the dead end. So I guess this room just existed to give us that key and let us fight some incredible, incredible rats. Here's another door. Let's go. This room was used for the preparation of food long ago. Now there's little left that has escaped the ravages of time. So the old larder. <laughs> yeah, they're very... Not a whole lot of graphics, but then again, consider 1989. You know, I think Dungeon Master probably had a little bit more detail uh, than this one does, but... Uh, I think this originated on an Apple II, and I know they had this DOS version and an Apple II version. I'm not, which, I'm not sure which one it, the game was developed on. Probably the... Uh, here's the dining hall again. My guess is they probably did the Apple II version first, and then somebody else ported this one, but don't know. Okay, what? Can we make any sense of this? It looks like it. That star is where I'm at. Let's see, there's a door. Let's see if we can find that. Where's the door? Man. <laughs> Where is that? Oh, crap. Okay, so there's a... It's like a little triangle of doors. Let's see if we can spot this. I don't see anything that looks quite like that. Let's see, map from there. There's off the map. You know, it could be I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Or it could be indicating this area. Huh. Take one more look at it. No, those are... Is it, sometimes they rotate it, too, just to kind of mess with you. But anyway, it's showing me a secret map. <laughs> or a secret room, I suppose. Okay, let's just keep going. Let's see if we can go that way. Let's see, have we been through this? No, we have not. You have found a new sanctuary. Consult your soul amulet to activate it. <laughs> hmm. Soul amulet. Oh boy. I wonder, do I have that? Let's see. This is Dark Heart of Ukrul. <laughs> uh, soul amulets. The copy protection. All right, they got a picture here for me. Wow, this must have been a pretty elaborate freaking system. Hurtus. Wow. Okay, I'm just looking here at these uh, pings. <laughs> Important. Do not lose or throw away. Man, that's going to take some time to translate this son of a gun. I guess there's a little circle there. That's a clue, I suppose. Yes, to identify the names of the ancients. Jeez. Damn. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> well, I guess you can't see this uh, this soul amulet, but it is a monster. Bunch, a bunch of symbols. All right, let's see. What is that? Kind of like a G-looking thing? Uh, I wonder if these go by from outside to in or inside to out. I don't see a G on that first one. Man alive, this is some hell protection. There gotta be an easier way than using this damn soul amulet. There it is. Okay, maybe that's a P for the first one. An O. Oh, don't don't do that. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Go back, stay. Okay. Oh, like a Ah, dog, damn it, what the hell? Stay put. Okay, got an O with it. Okay, stupid. It's the site that I'm trying to look at the image on is just going insane, so. Okay, let's see. That's better. 
So they have an O with a line over it. Where is that? I'm guessing it goes into the inner ring. No. Now this is tricky. Looks like that might be an R. <laughs> uh, what do we ask that other one there? That's kind of a big R. Okay, I found that one right away. That's a U. Uh, this D looking there. Whatever symbol that is. Kind of like a. Man, this is a challenge just getting through this copy protection. Okay, that looks like that could be an A. I hope I'm not supposed to be saying a word. <laughs> and then uh, E. A B. Prob. I guess I got it right. <laughs> Prob. Okay, cast, invoke, use, rest to recuperate. I hope I don't have to keep doing those... Uh, <laughs> those things. <laughs> that was tricky. <coughs> Cast, invoke, use, rest, recuperate. I guess I want to do that. Virtue points. Oh, I'm using up my food, though. Is this... What's happening? <laughs> do I keep resting? Do I stop? <laughs> I'll stop. Let's examine the part. Who was that that got hit? Let's see. Hit points. Yeah, everybody looks like they're up to max. Skill levels. Okay, probably. Yeah, I need a few XP to make the next level. Okay, I don't know if there's open cash. All right, let's try that. Sanctuary list stored items. Stored here? Nothing! <laughs> so can I put stuff into the cash? Is that how that works? Open cash, pick up items. Yeah. Uh, maybe some sanctuaries have stuff. Cast and book, use. Examine party. Uh, leave the sanctuary. So go ahead and leave. Uh, leave sanctuary by eastern exit, western exit, teleporter, or don't leave. Yeah, I came in here from the east, right? Okay, let me start a new file here. All right, let's see if we can get into some more trouble here. So I think those uh, sanctuaries are obviously where you want to go to uh, relax, rest up. Uh, and then kind of a doubles as a copy protection <laughs> mechanism. Let's see, this room was originally a guard room of some kind. It has been ransacked and nothing of worth has been left save the sword you see before you. And there is a sword there. <laughs> there is a short sword on the ground here. One to four to pick it up. Uh, which kind of... Don't I have some weapons already? Let's see. He's wielding a short iron sword. Breastplate, cap, buskins. I wonder if that other short sword is better than the one he's got. Let's see, inspect. I. There seems to be nothing unusual about it. What about F? Nothing unusual about it. <laughs> well, is it better than what I got? Let's try to wield it, maybe. Select weapon. I. Okay, I guess it's... Uh, how do I... <laughs> I have no way to tell if that's better or worse than the one I had before. Not that I can see anyway, so I guess we'll just use it. Oh, what's this? I had the floor is crumbled. James says that it was probably a well for whoever kept guard in this place. Look down. Can't make out anything at the bottom. Climb down and jump over and do nothing. Yeah, let's climb down. You managed to climb down safely. So one of the things they did say in the book is that this game is not... or The manual says that you can go up and down stairs. That doesn't necessarily indicate difficulty. It's all about the the sanctuaries, depending on... What, <laughs> I guess the set of levels you're thinking about areas around sanctuaries is the difficulties for getting from one to the next one. And so you're at the bottom of what used to be a well. There's still water here, but it's dirty and only a few fingers deep. Slimy, stagnant air. Oh, there we go. 
<laughs> some rats swarm at you from a pile of rubbish. Uh, so this, uh, you know, in the book I was thinking, this part here, it does, or really the game itself kind of reminds me of the gold box games. And you get that first person exploration mode, then it breaks into this uh, uh, turn-based combat. This one is top down instead of that sort of isometric view of uh, the gold box game. But it, it feels very similar. I notice also here we have a discrete phase, like a round for moving. And then you have your combat round. So we can move around a little bit. I don't know if these guys provoke attacks of opportunity or not. So you only get to move one. You only move one space. Okay. <laughs> this guy's not in a good position. Might have to get him out of there. How do I move diagonally? Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. Number lock. There we go. And here's James. He's kind of in a bad spot. But, okay, Seth, Perry, cast a spell, use an item. Let's see, this is our mage again. And unfortunately, I don't think I have that spell book handy. <laughs> this is where, you know, actually having the game would be really helpful. So you wouldn't have to keep coming back and looking at all this. Let's try that Armras snake spell again. Uh, let's try to target the one next to it. That one, yes. Nope. Oh. It's Cedar Cast. All right, took care of that one. Uh, rat hits Simon for three points. Yikes! Let's see. Can he attack from there diagonally? So he can parry attacks. He can invoke. He can call an elemental. That's probably overkill, but why not? Call an elemental. <laughs> Call which one? Air, earth, water, and fire. Eh, fire. No elemental spirit appears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I don't get that ability right away. See, so strike opponent. Sure. <laughs> James lunges at a rat and kills it. So I guess when the when you do strike opponent, it doesn't ask you which one. It just automatically oh come on simon uh delay i guess he's okay where he no let's go ahead and tuck him in there yeah and he's okay where he is james so i guess they can't attack diagonally parry attacks can't move either yeah parry attacks then spence so the call didn't work <laughs> let's try the uh Let's try to invoke again. So I should probably just write this down. So Amros. You know what I could do? I could just duplicate my tabs. That way I can have uh, <laughs> using like uh, a 2019 technology to try to make this 1989 game easier to play. Oh, he's got some other spells here. He's got a hammer of shattering. Hammer of shattering. Hell yeah. Let's let's try that out. You will need to recover more energy. <laughs> okay, I guess that's a little too much too soon, Seth. Uh, back to Divine Arrow. Raukor. Okay, did that... the hell? <laughs> what happened? Oh, it skipped this turn! Oh, damn! Yeah, so I guess if you don't get the spell right... You only get one shot at it. <laughs> well, that would be that would be really terrible if you're actually trying to guess these uh, spells. So I think he's only he's got something called Orlos, but he probably can't cast that yet. But let's just stick to old Amros. Uh, nope. Can I get that one that's like far off? Yeah, let's try it on him. So kind of range we get. <laughs> oh, boom. You know, Spence is pretty awesome. I don't know how many of those points he gets. Probably not a whole lot. Okay. Looks like everybody. Assuming this green is the health. Looks like we're okay. So let's just keep attacking. Oh, now he gets to choose. Okay. Boom. Good job, Simon. <laughs> I knew you could do it. <laughs> uh, now he gets to move, but he's okay where he is. Oh, that rat moved. You know what, Seth? Just strike. <laughs> Just strike. Boom! 
Man, he is really the rat slayer. Rat hits at Simon, but he parries the blue. Uh, why can't he? Oh, I can't move yet. <laughs> it's a little tricky. You have to you have to kind of pay attention to what whose turn it is. Just like in pool S. Yeah, so I'm, I assume after you play this for about a hundred hours, this would all be like. Uh, for me, though, I'm still having like really think about whose turn is it? Is it the move turn? Is it the attack turn? Let's go ahead and examine. Uh, let's see who was. Uh, yeah, psychic points. So he's got 10 of those points. And this, if I'm reading this right, the Snake of Fire, aka Emros, only takes two points. So he could cast that five more times. So I guess it's okay to be casting these. Look at this map again. I like the fact that it kind of shows me where I've been already. I just wish that I didn't have to keep. I wish that compass would just stay on the screen. <laughs> okay, I don't see anything. This doesn't look like the secret room, so let's get on out of here. Oh, can I get out of here, though? Look up. There's a well-lit area. The walls can be climbed very easily. Well done. Okay. <laughs> Moving on along. Let's just keep going straight, straight on across. Just don't even, don't even deviate. Ooh, what's that? Ahead you see a machine fixed to the wall. Seth comments that it is a teleporter used by the ancients to move over great distances. A teleport station, it has one button, <laughs> X. <laughs> Press it or leave. You know, I probably don't want to uh, teleport far away yet, right? Yeah, there's still a bunch of stuff here to explore. I need to go south. Let's get out of here and go. Now, I'm kind of wondering, too, if there's random encounters in this game. Or if it's just uh, all pre-made, pre-laid monsters. See an atrium. Okay, we've been there before. And, okay, south... A locked grate. I think I did pick up a key. Tries both his keys. Hmm. And we're in. The grate isn't locked. Well, can you go on through? What the? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Looks kind of like a s'more. You have found s'mores! There's a book. Ah, stupid book. Well, who wants the book? Is it? Probably the mage, right? Seth? <laughs> Seth, have a book, Seth. <laughs> Alright, can I use the book? Can I read the book? Shred of cloth? Where'd that come from? Book. <laughs> book. This is a small notebook written in Mara's hand. Mara's hand. It is badly bloodstained. Ugh. The only message in it reads, If you find this, you will know that Ukrul has defeated us. Arr! <laughs> he wouldn't rot. He'd just die. Now, lying on the. F well, what? Go back. What? It said something. Uh, I thought it said lying on the floor or something, something. Alright, so I guess my. The previous party has snuffeted. So I can either teleport out. Yeah, I guess I have to pick the teleporter. There's nothing else here to do. Alright, so let's teleport out. Let's see, heading. <laughs> heading, yes, yes, yes. Oh boy. Now it's time for my directile dysfunction to kick in. I need to kind of go that way. Yes. Is there no exit out there? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, so I have to go south and then around. All right. Yes, this is the way. I have to make sure to edit that part out so I don't look like an idiot who can't navigate a simple flat map. Okay, yes. Let's go this way. Back to the... Uh... Yeah, I think that's the teleporter in there, right? 
No, that's the well. <laughs> Where was that teleporter? Oh, jeez. That's the sanctuary, right? This thing. Where's that teleporter at? Is that the teleporter? Oh, boy. Well, maybe that's the teleporter. There we go. <laughs> All right, Seth. Yeah, you said that before. Okay, press it. It has one button. Press it or leave. How do you press it? X. <laughs> okay, something's happening. The dark heart of Ukrul. <laughs> so dark. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm mesmerized. It has one button. Why? Press it or leave. So I'm guessing I'm actually somewhere else now. Yes. <laughs> you have been transported to another area. The room here looks as though it was once a storeroom, though everything has now fallen into decay. You have entered the Mat Cave. What is that? Look at that. Now, honestly, what do you think that is? Man, I, I don't know. A cup? <laughs> an ointment. Oh, an ointment. Okay. Who wants the ointment? <laughs> now, I think Simon wants the ointment. There you go, Simon. <laughs> now, let's see. Surely we can do... Can we, can we look at the ointment? Smell it? <laughs> uh, inventory. All right. Let's see. Inspect the ointment. A small, a small pot of white ointment. Uh, inspect it. Drop it. Give it. Uh, maybe we can try using it. Let's go ahead and just use it. I mean, what? why not? <laughs> go ahead, Simon. <laughs> use your ointment. Swallow it. Cast on the ground, apply it to the skin, or do nothing. Mm, probably want to <laughs> apply it to the skin. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's a moisturizer. Apply to... Oh, he doesn't have to apply it to himself. That's good. You know, put it on James. Yeah, put it on James. <laughs> okay, what did that do to James? Wow. Hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, James. <laughs> Uh, I can't tell that it had any... <laughs> Your skin is glistening now, James. <laughs> we really don't know what that did. Probably for the best. That's all there is here? Just an ointment? What is this? The ointment room? It's where the folks go to get their... Bengay? <laughs> White ointment, huh? Sounds like a cold cream. Uh, searching, 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 not finding. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nothing there. <laughs> Teleport to the next place. Thanks for the ointment. I think they kind of overdid this a little bit. And, oh, what the? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> this teleporter is spraying you with glitter. Come on, come on, come on. Now has now it's back to the X. You know, I hope I didn't need that ointment. <laughs> Maybe I was supposed to put it on the wall or swallow it. Maybe it helps me to, to see things I couldn't see before or something. Now, let's see, do we, do we still have it? Inventory. We still got the ointment. <laughs> That's what's important. He's still got some left. Didn't use it all. Ugh. What am I supposed to do? Oh my god, I'm gonna have to look at a clue book already. I don't think there's anything else here. Yeah, I think we're. I guess we're gonna go back and see about this ointment. <laughs> Maybe, should I put the ointment on the teleporter? Maybe that's the key. You gotta smear it on the teleport station. It'd be great. I'm sure the person that uses this teleporter next would just be so appreciative. I see a bunch of buttons there. What? One button. I see eight buttons there. Okay, back to Y. 
What we can do is leave. No, there we go. Let's try to. Now, where should we try to swallow the ointment? <laughs> what the hell am I playing here? You know, it looks kind of to me like maybe that square there. You know, if I was going to put a secret door, maybe I'd put it there. So let's uh, go over there and see what we can see what we can not see. Okay, search nothing. All right, let's <laughs> let's use the ointment again. Come on, Simon. Ointment. Let's cast it on the ground. Nothing happens. Okay, let's uh. Let's eat it. <laughs> eat the ointment. <laughs> Maybe you're supposed to like put it on and you can s slip through a narrow passage. Swallow it. <laughs> Who will? <laughs> no, you're on your own this time, Simon. Sorry. Nothing happens. Well, what? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh, God. You know what? Maybe I have to actually follow that clue that we found earlier. I don't see any secret doors or anything here. Well, this dark heart of Urkel. <laughs> oh, there's some rats. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one was getting boring. Boom, boom. Whoa, what the? Those aren't rats. Those are like Ninja Turtles. <laughs> got, the, got the Ninja Turtles and the rats. Master and students. Okay, let's get you in position, Simon. Well, the good news is the uh, lizard men are pointed away from us. And so they won't be able to do any damage, right? Let's see, Spence, let's try to have you... Where can you move to? It doesn't look like any place is safe. James, he will rock him to death. Uh, you're okay where you are. Fighting. You know, you can tell what phase you're in because there's a big label up here called fighting. Let's see, Spence. All right, Spence, you are the priest. Let's use your arrow. Ralcor. So I guess that one picks its own targets. Parry attacks, use an item, examine James, no more attacks. Oh, parry. Strike. Boom. <laughs> Great animation. You know, that's really all the animation you need. You know, I can't stand these games where there's these big elaborate animations that take forever. It's cool the first time you see it, but then it's not. Boom. I wonder if you can get a bow. It can come in handy. Uh, do I want to move him? You know, I think I could probably take care of this last rat without <laughs> having to waste my uh, <laughs> magic on it. What up? You know, if I, I wonder if I parry, if it'll automatically attack when they get closer. Let's try that theory out. Uh, not going to get a chance to. Boom, boom, boom. Why is that rat just standing there? <laughs> Problem solved. Okay. Simon attacks the rat. Experience Simon, 26. So I'm guessing that this must depend on how much damage you do or whether you kill it or not. A shred of cloth. What do you need a shred of cloth for? Okay, anyway, I might seriously have to look for some help. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. This was, maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with the ointment. You know, maybe I'm getting kind of fixated on the, <laughs> the ointment. <laughs> it's just petroleum jelly. Now why does it do all this extra glitter here? Mystery. So mysterious. You know what I could do is go back to that sanctuary room and see about going through the other door. Yeah, that's probably what I'm supposed to do, isn't it? Because I think it gave me a choice. Yeah, I think I think it said I could go through another doorway. Yeah, see. I'll go ahead and rest a little bit. Boom. And leave through the eastern exit. Oh, there's a teleporter here, too? Oh, interesting. Interesting. This room has a large mosaic of the ancients on the floor. 
Spence remarks that it looks as though it was once a reception area. It looks like a reception area. <laughs> Listen, nothing. Ooh, I think it's a treasure. <laughs> a heavy iron chest. James and Simon prize it open to reveal one miserable copper coin. James takes the money. Wow. Thank you, James. I like how they just went in and just opened up the chest, didn't even give me options. <laughs> like, there's all this to, like, listen at the door, creep around, but <laughs> there's a chest. <laughs> uh, the torches in the passage have gone out. There's a strong smell of bat guano in the air, uh, carried on a thick cloud of dust that swirls about you as you walk through it. Uh, so they went to town on these descriptions. I'll give them that. Bat guano, dust, stale, musty oak. What is this? <laughs> and, well, what, what the, bats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bats and rats. You know, bats are basically flying rats. Uh, which makes them really cool, really fun. Moths, <laughs> monsters to kill. <laughs> Whoa, they're just going all over the place. Okay, looks like it can strike. <laughs> Stab the bat. Oh no, they hit Seth. Come on. A bat hits a James, but he parries the blow. See, Seth? <laughs> he parried the blow. Why can't you do that? You know, there's a lot of monsters here. Maybe I should start invoking. Let's try that Ralcor again. You know, it kind of gives you a sign of, uh, oh, what the? Hey! <laughs> Amount of points, I guess. I uh, but it shows you how big this game is. I mean, because this, this, th there's a lot of spells and all these different arcana groups, you know, and I'm just tapping the very early ones. Yeah, that's good. Imagine by the time you played this, there might be months of gameplay here for all I know. Strike the cave bat. Whoosh. <laughs> I can't tell if that's a guitar or like a golf club. Okay, go ahead and move him out there. Spence. And yeah, move you there. Boom. Attack. <laughs> oh, can't. Movement phase, Matt. Movement phase. All right, strike. Boom. Is it just me or can you see his midriff when he does that? <laughs> strike upon it. Boom. Pow. Hit that guy with your cross. Okay, let's rock out. <laughs> all right, killed them all. 17, 17, 11, 7. Treasure. None. All right. So I'll continue our little exploration. I think we're, I'm pretty sure we're still considered in the uh, beginner's area. Can't hear a thing. Yes, yeah, so I think it was uh, Casey that said this was his favorite game. He wished more people would play this. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! <laughs> woof, woof. You know, I'll give it to him. These are some really good... Uh, uh, the character portraits are really well done. Uh, not a lot of room to maneuver in here. Now, those dogs are reindeer. Because they, they look kind of like reindeer to me. Like Rudolph the Red-Eyed Reindeer. <laughs> boom, boom. Get these folks into position. I'm not even going to... You know, I don't know how hard these things hit. Let's see, I suppose... I don't think they're undead. Let's just uh, skip his turn. Three hit points. Yeah, so they're not that bad. There we go. A pack dog. Well, he's a pack dog. There's a pack dog and a dog. <laughs> the pack dog is bad news. When am I going to get to fight? There we go. Strike the dog down the... T Which one's it? They were dogs. Now they're pack dogs. Uh, pack dog. <laughs> so, what exactly is a pack dog? Is it like a dog with a pack? <coughs> or a pack of dogs? That's, what can he do? You know, don't waste your spells. He's kind of in the wrong place. Strike. All right, so much for the dogs. Six, six, three, three. 
Oh, we found a bone. <laughs> who wants the bone? Oh, uh, you know who needs a what is a bone? I, there's so much about this game I don't know. I wonder what a bone is for. Maybe there's puzzles that involve uh, items. The floor. Oh boy. As you step onto the intersection, the floor rotates beneath you. Oh, the joy. You cannot map this area. <laughs> because I wasn't having enough trouble before. Oh, boy. Okay. That doesn't look like there's... Ah! <laughs> this floor is rotating. I... Oh, there's a door. Get out of there. Whew. Okay, so I probably have to navigate that thing anyway. You know, and this kind of... I'm still thinking about that, that secret riddle or that little message I saw, that map on the wall. Still don't see anything that looks quite like it yet. Let's get on through that door there. You know, turn that way. <laughs> A lot of doors here. Oh, get There's an inscription. Translate with Ingus. You are leaving the halls of the Blood Noble. Hmm. Look at this stairway. Pretty cool. Where am I now, though? All who enter Erosti now acknowledge my dominion. You're <laughs> cool. <laughs> so you mean we really haven't been... I guess that was all like the training zone we were messing around with back there. I'm going to go back because I'm probably not ready for the uh, <laughs> the real game yet. Still got lots to explore here. As a matter of fact, south of me. Oh, heading. Yeah, here's an, oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, let's just stick to the rats a little bit. <laughs> Swarming at me from a pile of rubbish. You know, maybe I should move him a little bit. There we go. Now he's got targets everywhere. Move him there, move him there. Uh, probably don't want to let him get back into a corner. <laughs> See, parry attacks, sure. Rat bites James. Strike. Grr! Strikes at the rat, killing it. Oh boy, five points of damage. These things aren't playing around. I don't think they get a flanking bonus or anything like that. Boom. Just mowing these rats down, though. That is awesome. Now I got him. Now I got him. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how long it takes to get to the uh, two hit points to level up. I'm going to have to go rest up after this. I think these guys are just a... Simon's not looking too good. His green bar is down. <laughs> okay, okay, come on. Rat bites him again. Come on. How many turns does this rat get? Come on, when are my other... Fighting, come on. Parry. Do they not always get attacks? Is that the deal? <laughs> Okay, we're going to have to get back to Sanctuary. I'll rest these guys up. So let's see. North, one, two squares, and then west. I think I can handle that. <laughs> there we go. All right, rest to recuperate. Boom, 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 ba -dum, boom, boom. I haven't seen any food. I don't know where you go for more food. No stored items. Not sure how to store items either. All right. And start another file here. All right. So let's keep this, keep it going. I want to go out the eastern exit, right? Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. Where else have I? There's a little room to the south I should check out. 
that. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Heading south. Boom. Ah, good. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of worried though about what is that? Shapeless mass? All right. <laughs> That's a, a shapeless mass. Stay put. Fighting. Boy, I would pick him. Eh, let's go ahead and invoke. I'm not. <laughs> Try to get done with this. Let's see. Ralkor. Maybe he'll answer my prayers this time. The god of war. Does not answer. Why is he not answering? Take this warning, but know that Ufta, Silent Huntsman, will heed the calls of one who serves him truly. Okay. <laughs> I guess he doesn't always uh, respond. Let's try this guy again, then. Let's try. Amros. That's kind of weird. I don't know what the uh, why that works sometimes and doesn't work. I don't know if that's a game mechanic or just uh, just a random thing. Maybe when I'm doing something right. And, uh, what am I? Movement. Go ahead and tuck him in there. So what is the deal? Let's try a different, uh, let's try something different. All right, God of War, God of the Underworld. Not knowledge without wisdom. Weird. There's some healing spells. <laughs> There's a spell here called Virginal Sanctity. <laughs> Virginal Sanctity, Beyond. You know, I'm going to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to work. Yeah, Beyond. You will need to recover more energy. <laughs> and see, that's it. That's his turn. Boom. The rat bites at Seth. Okay, come on. This is this might be the end. I don't know what kind of damage that shapeless mass does. Better keep casting my hammer spell. Yeah, not that. That. Yeah, see, even the mighty snake. Man, that shapeless mass, that looks weird. <laughs> I can't even, what does that look like? Like a bunch of jelly beans that got like melted on the dashboard? Okay, fighting, let's see. Hopefully I'll be able to take that thing down. Still alive! Woo! 23 hit points. Yikes! <laughs> Got it. <laughs> amorphous glob. Make a, is it a shapeless mass? Is it an amorphous glob? Anyway, it had some treasure. Damn, though, that did a lot of damage. Now, let's see if I can heal. Let's see, invoke. Yeah, so you don't have to say which character you want to cast the spells, because there's only one of each. Let's see, Surder. Surde. Okay, what is going on with this? <laughs> Why am I not able to cast any or pray at all? He's got nine virtue points. Oh, so he's only got Ufta and Galther. Well, Galther. What's going on with this? <laughs> There's a spell called Caressing Hands. <laughs> I will ensnare you and draw your... Walk the words well. This is his do for heeding your command. You who pray to him, tend your words that your dark husbandry will not call forth your corruption. Let's try it. Caressing hands. Maybe it needs to be in all caps. <laughs> yes. Okay. Whoa. Gothor strikes him <laughs> for, for reaching his station. I could die trying to heal. What kind of game is this? <laughs> Third, hey. There we go. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> That's awesome. So that healed everybody up. Oh. How many points do I have left? Oh, that took a lot. It took a lot of points, but it healed everybody up. That's pretty cool. Okay, there we have it. <laughs> I haven't even explored this room yet. 
Okay. I still don't see anything that looks like that secret room. Let's see what else there is to explore here. Not a whole lot left unless I want to try to go back into that confusing ass. Let's try that room down here. The door closes behind you with a click. What? What is that all about? Is there a little door there? Let's go east. Weird. Huh. There's a sword. Short sword. Yeah, who wants a short sword? James picks it up. Yeah, I keep finding these swords, but I don't... I don't know if they're any good or better than what I got. Spect K. There seems to be nothing unusual. <laughs> it's a different color. <laughs> it's in this blue. I don't know. It's brown. Never mind. Okay. It said there's supposed to be some stores here somewhere. Okay, so just let's go a couple forward and then south. As you step onto the intersection, the floor rotates beneath you. <laughs> Weird. All right, let's see. We can figure this out. All right, so there's the way in, right? Yes. So we're going this way, heading east. We're facing south. We're rotated. Now we're facing south again. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> oh no. We're facing south. Let's face west again. Nothing there. Spence notices that the wall to the east is loose. Examine the wall, prod it with a staff, push one side of it by hand. Do nothing. Let's examine it. Notice that the wall pivots at its center. Uh, well, maybe we should prod it. The wall moves slightly around a pivot at its center. The wall turns around its center and you walk through to the room behind. There is a scroll here. Let Seth pick it up. Examine for <laughs> inventory. Inspect. J. There is a magical glyph on it. Well, thank you for that profound insight. So should I use the scroll? Let's try it. <laughs> use four. <laughs> scroll. Cast it on the ground. Read it aloud. Wave it in the air. Read it aloud. Nothing happens. Well, they're not giving me a whole lot of info to work with here. Still can't map it. Oh, boy. Let's try to go east this time. Oh. Oh. Is that the same door? No, I'm not going out now. <laughs> okay, so I've got a scroll now. Interesting. And what's up with this? Oh, that must be the stairs up. You know, I'm seeing like a little... Surely that's got to be a secret area there. It's just too suspicious. Let's go up there and see if we can find out. Maybe there's a way in there to the it's that way what's that say you were leaving the halls oh no 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 like do you see this there's gotta be right <laughs> where is the the torches in this passage have gone out oh, I missed the message the torches in this passage have gone out Come on, get in there. Maybe you have to search all the... Well, maybe. Maybe there's nothing there. Okay. <laughs> hey, it was worth a shot. All right, let's go on up the stairs then. Leaving the area. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> the mouth on this thing. Uh, you know, he looks a little familiar, doesn't he? 
Old doggy dandruff. <clears throat> move Seth. We should try to move these guys back, but... I don't see anything he can do. Just make everybody parry. The dog didn't move. Interesting. Or, sorry, the wolf. Where's he going? Huh. Oh, he went diagonal. Lame. Oh, what the hell. Let's try our good old Amorous. Oh, that didn't kill him. I'm definitely in a tougher area than I was before. I wonder how you learn. Maybe the more you cast spells. Some, sometimes these games, the more you cast a spell from a certain school, the better you get at it. I don't know if it's that kind of game or not. And you see the damage I did to James? Jeez. I don't have enough healing spells to heal anybody. This isn't looking good. He's still up. Okay, at least he moved within striking range of good old Simon. Stuns it. <laughs> We've stunned it. Oh, oh no. Oh, what the heck? I can't. None of these guys are in a good position. Man, this wizard is definitely pulling his weight. Sith. That's oh, Barry. I don't I wonder if I don't think they can attack diagonally. There we go. The <laughs> savage wolf. <laughs> You know, I tell you, I'm really not sure if we're ready for this area. I don't know where the the sanctuary is. I think I should probably go back and heal up. <laughs> Instead of leaving the area of safety. Now, let's see, where's my sanctuary? It's up one tick and over. Just to recuperate. I don't know where I got to get, go to get more food. Let's try the skill levels, am I? <laughs> yeah, not even close. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of those games that def you definitely have to have um, patience, right? Because it's, it's going to take a while to get to level two, unless there's more to explore down here. I just don't know about. But anyway, I think that we've probably played this probably played this enough to get a pretty good sense of it <laughs> see what kind of game it is you know it's it's it feels a lot like a gold box game but for some reason that exploration mode feels a lot more like a more dungeon master than it does uh, gold box somehow I guess because there's a lot more emphasis on the maybe maybe like the old bard still one of those rotating puzzles or wizardry. And there's definitely a lot of mapping that's going to be called for here. Even with the auto map, you probably want to have a... wouldn't hurt to have a guide. Parry maps. Three hit points. These combats are pretty tough, too. I don't know where to go to get more food. I guess at some point you find a store. I haven't seen any opportunities to, like, uh, take the rats. <laughs> uh... Phil dress these rats and cook them for food. That'd be pretty cool. I'm a little rat kebab. But it moves quick. I like that. It's just, it's a little weird not having any sound. <laughs> that would be the first thing if they ever made an enhanced version of this. Definitely could use some, some kind of sound effects. Oh, there's a dagger. Okay, a dagger. I wonder who can use that. Eh, probably not Spence. Probably gave it to the wrong guy. Inspect. It's a standard dagger. Well, thank you for that helpful description. <laughs> uh, you know, why can't we at least have some stats, folks? I don't know if it's in the manual somewhere. 
Let's see. Can you give it to somebody? Yeah, give I two <laughs> four. Let's go over there to Seth, see if he can equip it. Right, so what's he got now? Uh, he's got a quarter staff. He's got a bunch of daggers. I wonder if you can throw a dagger. Weapon. Select K. Okay, so I guess he can wield it. Don't know if that's better or worse than what he had already, though. All right, we're going to go back upstairs. But anyway, I was, I was saying it kind of feels a lot like Dungeon Master. Or something about the placement of this uh, exploration window, though, makes it feel more like wizardry to me. Moves quick. The hinges of this door are made of brass and have buckled outwards as though they have restrained a great force. Spence senses an aura of danger. Now, see, this bit with the text descriptions, you know, I don't recall, you know, this game seems to have more of those. You know, good writing, good description. It covers a few small coins. I mean, obviously, this is leaving a lot to the imagination, but still, you know, I can see why somebody would enjoy this. Maybe just, you know, for precisely that reason, right? Oh, what's this? What the heck is... <laughs> what am I looking at? A vision of an aged and weary enchantress forms. She speaks. Welcome, friends. I am Mara. Well, this is our, uh, these, these are the folks that were in there uh, before us. I am weak, but will help as I can. You must find the frozen hearts, but take care always. <laughs> The vision fades. <laughs> you must find the frozen hearts, but take great care. Always. Yes, must find the frozen hearts. <laughs> Look in the freezer. Um, where am I at? Okay. Oh, we found another <laughs> sanctuary. <laughs> all right, I don't know if I'm going to go uh, through all this, this again. Uh, but anyway, there you go. A little bit about dark, a little uh, demonstration, I guess, of dark heart of Ukrul. I just wanted to end here. I wanted to read a little bit from this manual because uh, they have a section in here called A Letter from the Authors. And they say that uh, Eris Day has been designed to feel like a huge, real place. Its passages don't fit into boxes, but spread out following the caverns and passages of the mountain. Don't be too concerned about moving up and down stairs. The progression and difficulty comes between sanctuaries rather than up and down levels. The game's emphasis is on depth of play and quality of puzzles. It's not just another Bash of the Monsters fantasy game. We could give you figures about the number of monsters or maze size, but that's not the point. We hope you find the puzzles challenging and tortuous <laughs> without them brick-walling you. <laughs> Nothing pleases us more than watching someone who has already played the game for hours Realize that the game has even more subtlety. The monsters, items, and maze elements have been designed to work together to make interlocking puzzles. Don't be afraid to try things out. It's often the only way that you're going to learn how to work. Interesting. We can't stop you using backups of your party, but we designed the game so that it will be best when the death of a character really means something. Play cautiously, resurrect, and make use of the mausoleum and guild rather than going to a backup. <laughs> You'll find it a much better game. Right. <laughs> We're confident the climax will prove surprising and fresh for even the most jaded palates. Uh, we hope that you'll find it the best game you've ever purchased. So they definitely didn't lack for uh, uh, enthusiasm here. Uh, so I think we've probably just barely scratched the surface of this thing. You know, I, we've found a bunch of items. I mean, everything from ointments to bits of cloth to... <laughs> scrolls, I have no idea what any of it does. Uh, supposedly there are spots in here where we will need to, uh, those are probably items that you'll need to use to solve a puzzle. Uh, we found some mapping, some t uh, uh, rotations and things. Uh, so it definitely doesn't feel like that. I mean, so far, yeah, it has kind of felt like the old, <laughs> you know, kill the rats. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but clearly there's a lot more here, a lot more puzzles to find.
Well, let's see. Do I want to bother? <laughs> I wish there was an easier way to do these sanctuaries. That is kind of a pain. Yeah, just just for fun, I'm going to see if anybody has uploaded a uh, a better way to do this than just looking at a picture of the amulet. <laughs> uh, where can I get the soul amulet cards that came with the game? Hmm. No. Nope. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I'll do this one too. Why is this stupid web page? It keeps flipping to the next one. Resample filter. Got to be a way to freeze it. Okay, let's see. What do we got over there? I'm telling you, this is not easy. Oh, and the There you go, that's an A. That looks kind of like an hourglass. You know, I thought the gold box games with those cove wheels were, were uh, cumbersome, but this one is just kind of wobbly shaped. You could easily, accident, even if you have this card, you know, you could easily put in the wrong code. I think that's an I can't tell what that is. <laughs> Maybe an E? And you got that God, what is that shape? C. Uh, you know they put so many what did it really need to have five levels? All right, got it. <laughs> well, I could automatically brought my health up. That's neat. Uh, maybe it only does that the first time. Let's, see, let's examine Seth. See up to, yeah, he's up to his full, full weight and full health. Still no hope of. Uh, still no uh, leveling. Huh. Well, at least we know where the sanctuary is here. There's a thin wire stretched across the passage, which Spence breaks as he passes. <laughs> Nearby, you hear a bell toll. Someone has been alerted to your presence. Huh. A gray cloaked figure approaches you and says, You look as if you don't belong around here. Show me your passes, or I will inform the boss. He leers wickedly at you. All right, what well, we can do? Say you lost them. Ask him if Ukru is the boss. Uh, force your way past him. Offer him money. Attack him or do nothing. So it's... I don't know if these passages are something you could have found if you were a little bit more <laughs> careful <laughs> uh, than me. Uh, let's just say we lost him. Suspicious of you, he draws a long knife from his cloak. <laughs> oh, great. Figure in gray. Uh, I guess he's okay there. Why did he move back? Let's see. Perry. I don't know if he'll Seth will be able to hit him from there. Let's try it though. Amorous. No. <laughs> Good job. Perry, Perry. Why is he? It looks like he's like running away from me. Okay, fighting. Perry, strike. 14 hit points. Got hit for six, though. I think I'll. Of course, this guy might have some buddies waiting. Hey, I moved up. This is. <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to this. Movement phase. Okay. It's a shame I can't attack diagonally, though. Parry, parry. Ugh, 12 hit points. 
Yeah, but it's okay if your characters die. That'll just make the game more meaningful to you. <laughs> right? Yes. No. All right. 19 hit points. Oh, jeez. This might be the end for <laughs> you, James. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and invoke. Let's see if I can do that healing spell. Uh, third hurry. And does not heed my prayer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was just kidding. I didn't need heals. 32 hit points, though. Hammers. Damn, he's still up. Oh, hit the other guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. Well, let's try it again. Stupid Gulther. Boom. Hits it critically. Job, Simon. Whoa, now that's some. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Look at that XP. All right, anyway, uh, that, this game has definitely got its hooks into me. <laughs> could, could sit here and play it for another four, two or three hours, but, you know, I would. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Listens carefully, but can't hear a thing. Anyway, Dark Heart of uh, Ukrul. You can't buy this at GOG or Steam, unfortunately. It's pretty easy to find on the abandoned wear sites with all the manuals. You will need this. Dark Heart of Ukrul Soul Amulets. I guess originally that was probably just printed out uh, on a card or something, but nowadays you could find this in a handy dandy JPEG or ping uh, image. Search it for it on Google. Uh, apparently lots of puzzles, you know, we've seen some of those, lots of uh, good mapping, lots of battles with rats, <laughs> good turn-based combat exploration, I mean, it's got it all. Uh, the only thing that's seriously lacking here is the sound, uh, which really by 1989, 1990, a little bit unusual not to have any sound in the game, I think. Uh, apparently the Apple II version doesn't have sound either. Not necessarily a deal breaker, I mean, like Bard's Tale, I don't think that had... It had a few little ditties, but not a lot of sound in that either. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you're familiar with this game, love to hear your thoughts on it. You know, have you beaten it? You know, I especially like to hear from people that played all the way through uh, through this. You know, let me know how representative these uh, this first stuff is, or if it gets way better, or it gets uh, worse as we go along. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, if you haven't, uh, definitely go check it out. I definitely think it's worth trying out, especially if you've played through uh, all the Bard's Tales and all the other turn-based games. Maybe you haven't heard of Dark Heart before. Uh, it seems like it kind of slipped under the radar of a lot of people. That seems like a great game, though. Uh, but anyway, I will stop it here. Uh, I think it's a great game, uh, so go check it out, and I'll see you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully be back uh, uh, next week with uh, some, some other of these games, uh, these undersung heroes, if you will. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the Dark Heart, and there's lots of games. You know, it's just amazing. I mean, there's probably at least a few hundred more games that I've been meaning to cover uh, that I haven't gotten around to yet. So if you like these uh, reviews, retrospectives, whatever, uh, stay tuned. I think you'll uh, really enjoy what's coming up. Uh, as always, though, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very, very much for uh, helping me put this uh, show on, keeping it in production all these years. Just celebrated the uh, 10th year anniversary last time. Couldn't do it without you, uh, so I really, really appreciate your help. I, I mean, you make all this possible, so just really thank you very, very much. Uh, if you uh, would like to support the show, just go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon link. Uh, you can also go to the, uh, there's a PayPal link as well if you don't do the uh, Patreon thing. Uh, but however uh, and however much you support the show, I really appreciate it. So thank you. All right. So what about that news from the Matt Cave? All right. So I've got some great news here. <laughs> some fantastic stuff, really. Uh, the first up is an announcement about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Uh, now, this is uh, slated to come out uh, sometime in 2020, 
that's what a paradox says anyway, it was announced at the uh, GDC in San Francisco. And they're saying it's not a remake, it's not a remaster, it's a proper sequel. <laughs> now that's good news for a lot of folks. It's developed by uh, Hard Suit Labs, and they've got Brian uh, Mitsoda, who designed the original Bloodlines on board to be this, uh, uh, to take the lead on the narrative uh, role on this game. So you can go check out the trailer. Um, you know, it is a, it's going to be at least 12 months, they're saying, before this game comes out sometime. I guess that's probably the, the it could take longer. You know, these things usually come out <laughs> after they say it, uh, more often than they come out before. So I wouldn't get too excited yet. You know, wait until we get some more stuff, uh, see some more stuff about it. But anyway, I know a lot of you guys are big fans of the Bloodline series. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty good news. That's something to look forward to. Uh, next up, we've got Diablo has finally come to GOG, goodoldgames.com. And, and it's not that, <laughs> you, know, you know, wonderful. Uh, what's really great about this, though, to me, is that Diablo, at least for me, and I remembered when I covered it in Mad Chat, just a really difficult game to get running properly into Windows 10. Just took takes forever. Uh, it doesn't work well. doesn't play well with, uh, with that was, I think, Windows uh, XP. You know, I had a hard enough time with Windows XP. I don't know what it would be like trying to get it to run with uh, <laughs> with Windows 10. So anyway, all that has been uh, solved now. You can get it from GOG. And, and they've done some pretty cool stuff. Uh, so it's, they didn't update the graphics or anything, but what they did do, uh, they still got the match basic, matchmaking with the classic version of Blizzard's Battle.net online gaming service. Uh, so that's good news. I know a lot of people like to play Diablo <laughs> multiplayer. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, includes out-of-the-box Windows 10 ca compatibility a host of bug fixes and high resolution support via aspect ratio correct upscaling. Uh, so if you've been wanting to play Diablo, you didn't have much luck getting your disks uh, to work properly on <laughs> Windows 10, uh, this is really good news. And I'm kind of surprised really that Blizzard would allow this, uh, you know, go forward with a DRM free version of <laughs> any of their products. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, that's over at GOG. I'll post a link to that in the show notes. And then uh, lastly, I had uh, somebody write in named Rob uh, Hewson. He says, uh, Matt, I'm getting in touch on the advice of one of the Kickstarter backers for Silk. Silk is a sandbox RPG adventure game inspired by the likes of Oregon Trail, The Lords of Midnight, and King of Dragon Pass. Chris Bateman, designer of Discworld Noir and Ghostmasters behind the game. And we were wondering if you'd be interested in covering it, uh, whether through an interview or Let's Play the demo or something else. Uh, but here's a video with Chris giving a walkthrough of the demo himself. Uh, so I watched the video. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, you get a good sense of uh, Chris's personality and see what this game is all about. And, you know, whether it's something you'd want to support or not, you know, do let me know if you want me to you know, follow through with this and see if I can get Chris on the show. <laughs> I can certainly do that. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, uh, you know, a labor of love from, from good people. So, so go check it out. All right, I think that will do it for the news. Uh, so let's wrap it up uh, with a quotation. And I was uh, looking for quotes about puzzles. And uh, there's, there's a fair amount to choose from, but I thought this one was pretty cool. And it goes something like this. A good puzzle, it's a fair thing. Nobody is lying. It's very clear. And the problem depends just on you. Now, the person who said that, <laughs> Probably knows a thing or two about designing puzzles. Uh, that was Erno Rubik. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next time. People have no grasp of what they do.